Good evening. All right, Charles Guthrie here, Director of Athletics for the Zips. We're excited you decided to join us tonight to hear about our two fantastic basketball programs. Um, I think it's going to be a fantastic season. We're really excited. We've got a lot of returners back, a lot of energy. Team's been working really hard. Um, just, I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am about our men's basketball and women's basketball programs. So that being said, I'm going to hand the mic over to our MC, our Senior Associate AD for Development, uh, Cameron Stockton. Not related to John Stockton, though. Cameron. Cameron. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the University of Akron and historic James A. Rhodes Arena. And I am excited to say that here in the city of Akron, it is basketball season. So round of applause for that. Before we get started tonight, I wanna to take a second um, and mention someone that is very near and dear to the University of Akron basketball program um, who passed away this past week. And that is uh, Mr. Billy Turner. Um, he was the first and only University of Akron basketball player to ever play in the NBA um, after he was drafted by the San Francisco Warriors in 1967. Um, he earned honorable mention All-America honors in 65 and 66, and then he was a first-team All-American in 1967, and then was later inducted into the Zips Hall of Fame, the Varsity A Hall of Fame in 1976. So we'll just do a quick moment of silence here for Billy Turner. Thank you. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get the teams up here and get the coaches, introduce everybody, and then we're going to have a little bit of fun this evening. So if we can get everybody up here, both teams, both coaches, come on up. We'll do men on the left, women on the right. Thank you all for, uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Ryan Gensler. I'm our women's basketball head coach. I uh, want to thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, my staff, for being here and, and your wonderful families. I uh, wanted to introduce our current roster. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, got the job in April, and um, we had five returning players uh, heading into um, the, the crux of the transfer portal, and uh, very appreciative of those five uh, that, that stayed and, and really believed in the vision. Uh, every conversation that we had um, uh, was a real hit of belief uh, for what we're going to accomplish this year and, and what they're going to accomplish in their acting career. So if I could have those five just step forward and I can introduce you guys first as our returners from last year. Reagan Bass, our junior, all right, uh, Annie Watson, sophomore from here in Akron. Reagan's from Strongsville just up the road. Zakia Rashid from Indiana and Tamal Thorpe all hailing from the Ontario region of Canada, our s senior. Um, and if you guys could step back for me for a second, we'll introduce to you our freshmen. Go ahead, you guys can step forward here. We have uh, Olivia Brown here, also from Indianapolis area. We have Layla Jones from the Columbus area, here as a freshman, and Daisha Lewandowski from Pittsburgh as well. Um, these guys were uh, proud to have signed a letter of intent last November and stayed uh, true to their commitment and have been putting in the, the groundwork ever since then. And then uh, not here is uh, Tanisha Clark, uh, another freshman from Canada uh, that signed with us late in April. Uh, very excited about this group um, as they're incredible students and, uh, and really working hard on the court. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? The remainder step forward. So this group and I didn't know each other as of uh, March 29th, um, but as uh, probably March 29th at about 6 o'clock after talking with Charles, um, I was very uh, pleased to have had a couple staffers already on board and, uh, and got to work trying to, to recruit and, and influx some talent and complement the players that we already had here. Um, Mobley, Alexis Mobley, also from Indiana. We've got a nice little pipeline coming in was at Danville Community College, just down the road from where I was at the University of Illinois. Uh, she is a junior. Kai Woods from the Toledo area, originally uh, here in Ohio, but was at Washington State. 
uh, where they won a Pac-12 championship last year. Lisa Tappanen uh, was a post player with me at University of Illinois last year. She is a sophomore. Lene Riley, uh, locally here, graduated from Hoban, was at Middle Tennessee State uh, last year and transferred back. And then Morgan Haney was from the Cincinnati area, um, is a grad transfer and after winning a couple championships at University of Albany. So really, really pleased to have, uh, you know, complimented this roster. Um, it's an unbelievable group um, that has really bought into uh, to a strong process and vision uh, from day one. And uh, they've really been putting in the work. Um, we got my staff behind them. Uh, also had to hire uh, brand new, but uh, Chloe, remain, oh, sorry, there you go, Mills. Uh, Chloe remained as, uh, as one of our GAs. Marty Vosser's right behind her, came from uh, University of Minnesota, where he, uh, he just graduated. Deja Ford was uh, just wrapping up her GA ship down at St. Francis, PA. Uh, Sarah Jones and I recruited her when she was in high school back in uh, her Maryland days. And then from a staff perspective, Aaron Mills-Reed uh, was able to get her away from Stephen F. Austin, where they had won a few championships in their league and had gone to multiple NCAA tournaments. Sarah Jones, uh, Jonesy and I had worked together down at Loyola, Maryland way back in the day. I uh, went to St. Joseph's University. She went to Villanova just up the road, but alas, we are still friends. Um, but uh, she was at Murray State last year, so awesome to reunite with her. Uh, Coach Jessica Jenkins, um, I had coached her at St. Bonaventure University. Uh, she had just come to us from Providence College. And then uh, Coach Nick came back. He was our strength coach. He was here as a GA, and, um, and that, that rounded out our group. So uh, really excited to have this group with us, and uh, we so appreciate you guys coming out. Um, we've got two more floor seats that we need to sell by the end of the night. Uh, you know where to look. See Sam, see Cam. Uh, we got to get those sold. So these guys have some friendly faces on the baseline and the sidelines uh, throughout the season. Uh, as we've got a really, really nice home slate and certainly some great matching uh, after the new year. But um, Camden. All right, ladies, y'all can take a seat. We're going to bring up Coach Gross and have him introduce his squad. Does this microphone, do we have enough of them? That they can, I was going to have them introduce themselves, if that's okay, and pass it down the line. Okay, I'm uh, John Gross, head men's basketball coach. I do want to introduce my family, Camden, who just stood up here, uh, my son, Connor, uh, my wife, Allison, and my daughter, Kate. I love you dearly. Okay, we're going to pass the uh, mic down the line here. Guys, name what year you are in school. So you ready? We're going to see if they can pass the first test of the night. Name what year you are in school, where you're from, and what you're majoring in. Name year athletically, because some of you asked me that with COVID. Which one, coach? Athletic year. Name athletic year, what you're majoring in. And lastly is what, Shema? Oh, see, we've already, we're in trouble. <laughs> Where you're from? Here we go. Is this it's on camera. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Uh, my name is Enrique Freeman. I'm a senior. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm working to get my MBA in business. Uh, I'm Greg Trouble. I'm a senior. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I'm studying sports management. I'm Sammy Hunter. I'm a senior. Like these guys, we all old. I'm from Nassau, Bahamas. <laughs> I'm from Nassau, Bahamas, and I have a degree in criminology. Mike Dawson from Huntington, West Virginia. I'm a junior, and I'm a sports management major. Uh, Caleb Thornton. Uh, I'm uh, from Bolingbrook, Illinois, and my major is organizational supervision. Shema Scott, I'm a junior. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, and my major is sport management. Uh, Monty Lyles, I'm a sophomore from Columbus, Ohio, and my major is business marketing. Uh, Zach Halligan, I'm a freshman. Uh, I'm from Green, Ohio, and my major is sports analytics. My name is Marvin Musime Kamali. I'm from Brockton, Massachusetts. Uh, my major is neuroscience, and I'm a freshman. My name is Nate Johnson. I'm a sophomore. I'm from Dayton, Ohio. And I, my major is sports studies. 
Evan Wilson, I'm a junior, I'm from Noblesville, Indiana, and I'm studying sports business. Uh, Ali Ali from Kendallville, Indiana, I'm a senior and I'm majoring in uh, sports coaching. Now we're done with the players, Go moving on to the staff. My name is Blaine Calhoun. I am the Assistant Director of Basketball Operations. Hey. <laughs> Rob Fulford, uh, Assistant Coach. I promise we didn't try to line up by height down here with coaches. <laughs> or hairline. Dustin Ford, Assistant Coach. Robbie Bridget, Assistant Coach. John Eakey, Director of Basketball Operations. Devin Morrow, GA. Peter Farkas, grad assistant. Connor Marlott, athletic trainer. Javon Shaw, strength conditioning. Let's give them a round of applause. Okay, are there any family members here tonight of any of our players or staff and support staff that's at the end of the line down there all the way to the left? If you're here tonight, because the crowd is, this is an awesome crowd, by the way. It's even bigger, Cam, Charles, and what we had last year. This is awesome. Kudos to you guys for coming. We really appreciate it. But if you're a family member of anyone up here, please stand. Do we have any? I want to make sure that you're recognized. Jerry, I see Jerry. Please stand. It takes, obviously, a lot of sacrifice and commitment by our families for us to coach and play and be a part of something uh, bigger than ourselves like we are, but to do this on a daily basis, the support of our family is, and friends is huge. So we're all so thankful for you that came tonight uh, to support. I also, and don't be bashful, we have several people here tonight. We always say it takes a village to do what we do and to excel at the highest level. So the next group of people I want to recognize are those that have contributed in any way at all whatsoever to help our program previously or even this year. There's been some that have done it here recently. Please stand and do not be bashful because I want everyone to understand how important that you are. Please stand. George, stand. Ferris, stand. Carl, stand. Lynn, stand. Hoffs, stand. Diane, stand. Harris, stand. John, stand. Stand up. Yeah, all the way down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Because it does. It takes a village uh, to do what we're trying to do to compete at the highest level. It really does. Not, not one person can do it by uh, themselves. Um, I also want to take uh, this time and thank you all for standing. Um, and he's probably going to kill me for doing this, but special recognition to Bud and Wentz and Heather Wentz are in the back who do a lot for our program just like you. But we're so thankful. Clap it up for them. Our guys know whether it's the practice facility that you've heard us talk a lot about here recently or the locker rooms or coaches shows or I could keep on going. Thank you. Thank you. You're making a difference. Um, our team, right? We're so excited about uh, our crew this year. We've got an older crew, as Sammy just said. <laughs> you know, these are all the, I call them the senior citizen guys. You know, we've been around for a while. So we're one of the oldest teams in college basketball. Um, we're trying to enjoy every second that we get to spend together. Uh, at the same time, we also, this group has big, big goals. Big, bodacious, hairy goals. And so every day we come to work. I'm saying to myself when I sit in that office, this is what these guys are telling me they want to do. So our job is to hold them accountable to the highest possible standards as people, students, and players. And sometimes that's uncomfortable, right? Very uncomfortable. Um, these guys would tell you, last week was a tough week in practice, and it was deliberately designed that way. Okay? We are of the ilk that we believe that failure is a way in which you can improve. The struggle is real. We normalize the struggle in our program. Uh, we all know in life we struggle. Uh, all of us struggle, right? We're all dealing with something. I always tell them that. We attack it head on. We confront it. 
Okay? So accountability is a big thing in, in our program. And we're so fortunate and blessed as a staff to be able to coach guys. We've got good leadership at the top with these older guys. And I, I, I probably don't thank them enough. I need to even more, and I'll do it publicly, that they let us coach them the way that they do, especially the older guys, because then that helps us coach the entire team. I was talking about that with a couple of our veterans this afternoon. So when you're a young guy and you see, wow, I've been here four or five years, and that guy, whoever it is, Enrique, Greg, Sam, Sammy, all the way down the line, Mike D's been here a long time. Ali's back now for his fourth year stint with us. And you can hold guys accountable to high standards, then everybody else kind of falls in line, and they basically are creating, helping us create a program where regenerative leadership is taking place. So they're passing the torch whenever they leave here to the younger guys, and then they become a little bit older, then I'm going to expect them to pass the torch, and that's how you build something that you can sustain is through that leadership. It's about people. You know, it really is. So it is a real privilege to coach these guys. We're super excited about the season. Um, you know, obviously I think the schedule's been up on the screen. We open up a week from tonight at South Dakota State. I can't tell you how excited I am to take the guys there on Sunday, play on Monday, and fly back. It's a phenomenal opportunity. South Dakota State is 151-9 and nine in their last 160 home games. And we scheduled it on purpose because we love challenges. We love competition. They got the preseason player of the year in Zeke Mayo, a returning front line, a guy that didn't play last year, returns this year a little bit like Mike D was for us. He was a big part of their team two years ago. He'll have a chance, his name's Luke Apple, to be an all-league guy as well. Their center last year was a freshman of the year in the league. Okay, they're very, very good, and we, we are super excited. Our focus will be on them starting on at the end of the week. Right now we're finishing preseason practice. We had uh, practice today. We'll go again tomorrow and Wednesday and then close the books on preseason, okay? And then we'll have a day off, and then we'll start a three-day prep for Monday night's game. Home openers November 10th in here in the MAC uh, Sun Belt Challenge, where, again, we'll have another great opponent that won their league last year, won 27 games, um, have a player of the year uh, type guy back, uh, and, and got a, a transfer kid that, that played at Illinois in St. John's named Andre Corbello. So they're going to be very good as well. We're challenging our guys. I think our schedule's the strongest it's, it's ever been from top to bottom in the 13 games. I really do. And so we're going to be challenged, uh, and we're looking forward to that challenge. Thank you for coming tonight. It's great to have you here. I also lastly want to thank our administration for, for putting this on. Um, you know, obviously, it starts with Charles and his entire team. Um, Mike Saxon's also here, who's a board member. Mike, appreciate you being here and supporting this uh, as well. So again, we'll have time, I think, for questions and answer, and I'll hand it back to Cam as we continue on with the evening. Go Zips. Right, we're going to do the, a panel now. So. All right, if I could get Coach Ginsler, Reagan Bass, Enrique Freeman, and Coach Gross. Do a little round table action. She just skips the steps. My legs aren't long enough for that. <laughs> All right, well, we're excited because it's not often that you have one player on a, on a team that is really an all-timer for the institution. And we're lucky enough this year to have two all-timers that are going to be on the teams this year. So it was awesome to be able to bring them back, talk to them. And then we wanted to be sure that we gave everybody a chance to meet this guy, because he is new here, O and O, most popular guy on campus right now. Uh, so we're, he's been enjoying that since March. So as long as you win, you get to keep on enjoying it. That's, that's how that goes, right? So all right, Coach. Coach Ginsler, we're going to start with you. Tell us about the season. Tell us about some challenges you guys are going to face, and then what we can expect to see from a Ryan Ginsler team. Yeah, I think uh, you know one of the biggest challenges is when you, you take over a job and in fluxing you know new talent and, and meshing you know a group of nine with with players that are previously here is is just building those relationships. And um, you know, I've been really fortunate that these players have have really bought into that aspect of team building. Um, you know, these players meet with me 
bi-weekly uh, since the day I got here um, to just to, to learn more about them. And when they went home, we had conversations. Reagan and I played golf this summer out by her in, in Strongsville. Who won? You know, I, I may have beaten him just a, just a little bit. It, it's always the short game, Coach. You know, uh, it's just drive for show, putt for dough, and Reagan's going to make a lot of money someday. So. <laughs> Um, but no, it's, it's the, the things like that that they've really bought into. And I think that's one of the challenges is now that this group coming together and, and really, you know, trusting each other um, as, as they've been so kind and gracious to, to trust us. And, um, you know, that's a challenge that's ongoing. And you, and you really don't meet that challenge until you go through hard. And, you know, as Coach Gross said earlier, you know, you embrace the challenges. You embrace the failure because uh, it's the only way that you can kind of reset the edge of things. And we, we talk all about you know, all the time about, you know, the event plus your response equals your outcome. And uh, for us, we are constantly challenging ourselves to respond in the most positive fashion we can because um, we know it's not going to be, you know, an easy season. We've got some great teams lined up, um, you know, as we hit that Sun Belt Challenge and, and go down to Southern Miss on the road <clears throat> for our very first road game will, will be a challenge in and of itself. So, um, you know, it's... It's ongoing for us in our process of, of playing together. You know, we're, we're blessed with having, you know, an all-MAC returner. Um, we're blessed with some, some talent at multiple positions and some really good competition. You know, iron is sharpening iron in practice, um, and it's afforded us the opportunity to try different lineups um, and, and try, you know, kind of some different styles to play four guards, to play two posts together. Um, and, uh, you know, both offensively and defensively, it's, it's presenting some challenges for our opponents and as we learn and grow what our, our true strengths and weaknesses are. But um, it, it's been a, a great group that has really bought into that process. And, um, you know, I, I can't thank them enough. Um, as far as style and, and what we can expect on, on the court, you know, there are really just a, a couple absolute standards for me um, on, on the court is that we always play hard and we always play together. And um, if we're doing those two things, uh, special things can happen, but we'll always, we want to run and we want to play fast. And I, I joke with every recruit that, that steps in our office, say two things you're always going to hear at nauseum for these used car salesmen of, uh, of coaches that, that, that are out there, coach. We're a family and we play fast. And I said, that, that's awesome. And those are the things we want to strive for. And, and in order to become a family, that doesn't happen overnight. And I told these guys in April, we're not a family yet. We haven't, we haven't gone through anything. We're building the foundation in the, in the blocks every day. And through those struggles, we're able to really solidify that and, you know, make it a foundation that we're proud of and that we can lean on. And so, you know, now we are more of a family than ever, um, and building that trust and really getting to know one another. And, and that's something that I'm really proud of them for. And the, the fast thing is I always ask them, I say, hey, have you ever asked the coach, how they're going to play fast. So like if you peel back that onion, what are the steps you're going to do to that? I said, for us, we're going to defend and we're going to rebound. We're going to defend at a high level. The last five seasons in the MAC, you're either you know first or second in the league in defensive field goal percentage, or first and second in the league in rebounding percentage. Those are the teams that are playing on that last day in the MAC championship, and those are the things that we're, we're hanging our hat on in practice, you know, every day. Uh, that we're not going to be able to play fast. We don't have the ball. And in order to get the ball, we've got to defend as a unit as a group of five, and then we've all got to be rebounding, hitting the boards, and thankfully we've got versatile, versatile enough players to be able to start that fast break and, uh, and, and really, you know, push it in that. So that's the kind of style and that's the kind of expectation. Um, but no matter what the score is, if you came to one of our games, uh, I think the, the expectation is that we're playing hard and we're playing together and we're playing for each other, and that's, that's a feeling, and I really believe that's the secret sauce that makes, you know, good teams good, um, but like the elite teams, they have that playing for each other. All right. Coach Gross. I have still, to follow Coach Gensler's response. I was, was going to say, he's still the most level. popular guy. He speaks in level class. John, John's been doing this for a while. All right, I already, I already forgot to thank my family for being here. So John, John's just setting the table. <laughs> I'm growing through failure tonight, and I appreciate him affording me that opportunity as my wife looked right at me. But uh, my wife, Leanna, Jackson, my mom and dad. I, you know, when I got the job, uh, my wife had our infant Nolan. Where's Nolan? Is he in his car seat? Yeah, he's in his car seat. Uh, about eight days into the job. And uh, so there was no press conference. There was, I said, Charles, if you don't mind, I'd love to just hit the road recruiting. Like, I, you know, my wife will kill me if I come back one more time. Uh, can I just be on the phone? And my lovely staff had an official visit the day of uh, Lisa Tappanen's visit on campus, and uh, she committed. 
thereafter. And uh, not only was I a proud father, but uh, very proud to have one of our first recruits after a few of our uh, five decided to stay. And those were the most important ones that we had. So it was a whirlwind April, but <laughs> thanks coach. <laughs> All right, Coach Gross, I know that uh, preseason polls are coaches' favorite things. I know that you guys just thrive on those. Um, you guys are the MAC preseason favorites. Is that a blessing or a curse, and how are you working through it? I would say neither, Okay. Um, to be honest. I mean, you know, our guys are smart enough to know we've got older guys that have won, that those things don't mean anything. They don't. It's nice. Um, so I guess, you know, maybe can be a blessing when you look at it that way. Um, I think it can only be a curse if you get absorbed by it. So our program goals, this particular team, 123 is what we call our team, team 123, their goals are what our focus is on. Not necessarily what the Almanac or Blue Ribbon or Sporting News or Athlon or for that matter the MAC coaches uh, who voted this week. So it just, you know, we can't control that. And I, and I tell them, and I've really learned this the hard way throughout the 30 plus years now of coaching, if you get absorbed by expectations, Camden, I, I just think it leads to, to disappointment. Okay, we're not getting caught up with outside expectations. Uh, we're not. Our focus right now, at least mine with our staff and our team is we're a work in progress. How are we getting better today? I said that to him today. Let's get better today. Then we come in tomorrow. How do we get a little bit better tomorrow? And let's control what we can control. Then all that other stuff will take, take care of itself. You know, we, we have the luxury of having, you know, some older guys, I think, uh, that get that. But every once in a while, without getting into specifics, uh, sometimes you need to get humbled. You know, I always tell them you, you learn one of three or four ways. You either listen and learn, you hear, you know, listen here, see it. Some people learn better by doing, and some people learn better by peeing on the electric fence. And so you want to try to avoid that. And, but I think we had that happen to us here recently, and, I, and I'm viewing it as something that can be a positive moving forward if we handle it the right way. All right, we'll stick on that train of thought, Enrique. You're on the Carl Malone Award watch list. Round of applause for that. Round of applause for that. <laughs> Going into your senior season, what do you expect out of yourself? What do you expect out of the team? Um, I mean, I expect for myself kind of the same thing I expect every year. Um, I think both of them were talking about challenges. Every year is we're going to get different challenges. Obviously, we were really successful the last two years. So I think for myself, I'm excited to see how I'm going to embrace these new challenges. And I think for the team, I'm excited for us to see how we're going to embrace these challenges as well. All right. Reagan, coming over to you. In the age of transferring and all of those things, we're very excited that you decided to come back this year. Can you tell us what went into that decision and, and why you decided to come back for another year at the University of Akron? Um, I think it's more than just a game of basketball. I'm here for school as well, so I mean, everyone preaches, I mean, coach preaches, we're a student first, we are a student athlete. So looking into that, um, this is one of the best engineering schools, that's my major. So that's one of the main reasons why I stayed. I mean, the MAC is a intense, challenging level to play at in general, so I love that for myself. I know I had conversations with Coach G, when he was thinking about coming here, I mean, when his job was announced. Um, so I think I really meshed well with him and his goals for the season. And I just saw like that alignment really early on and I wanted to stick, stick around and help him through that. Perfect. Round of applause, Round for, applause that. for that. Round of applause for that. Applause for that. Coach Gensler, we'll come back to you. You've got quite a few new faces and newcomers. Um, can you tell us about how the team's coming together? And Yeah, you know, and I mentioned it before on the trust part and, uh, you know, the, the luxury of being able to play different lineups, uh, you know, having some unique depth, you know, at, at the post spot um, is, is no surprise. You know, Lene Riley uh, transferring in from uh, Middle Tennessee and Lisa Tappanen, you know, as well, and, and amongst our other 
returning, um, you know, post players with Andy Watson, um, and, and certainly with Reagan, you know, it, it allows us a great opportunity to kind of throw different pitches, if you will, within the, within the game of, you know, um, so that the team can't necessarily get accustomed to the same pitch. Um, we've got kind of different, um, you know, sizes, you know, athleticism, you know, all these different kind of wear and tear. And, you know, I told this group, I said, you know, it, they must constantly push each other to another level every single day in practice so that we are constantly wearing down opponents throughout uh, throughout games. So, you know, that, that's the, the post group in general. You know, for me, you know, obviously being six foot seven, uh, that was my position coach as an assistant, so it's near and dear to my heart uh, as far as what they are capable of doing and, and success over time. You know, those are kind of on the, the front lines of us of the wear and tear. And the other newcomers that came in, you know, we wanted three level scoring guards. And that's a, that's a vital part of, of our offense of playing out of, out of the ball screen. Um, which, which we will be, uh, you know, a primary focus for us um, with having these great post players garner the respect when they set great screens and roll to the basket. We've got to have guards that can complement that with some perimeter shooting and, and shooting off the bounce. So, you know, we were able to, to address that. My staff did an incredible job of really studying the type of players that, that fit us. But as Reagan mentioned, you know, we, we look at character first and foremost and, and who they are and who they truly are at their core. Um, you know, they're motivated students. Every single one of them that, that came here are motivated students that really, you know, honor the Akron degree. Um, they work hard. I, they're not people that I have to chase down to go to class. Uh, I can consistently get those midterm reports and, and see some, some great grades after having, you know, a top 50 GPA in the country last year. That's something that we want to continue to, to crack and possibly be top 25 this year. It's, it's challenging with these engineers and math majors and nurses and the, all the labs that come with it. Um, but you know, they've really done a really good job of uh, complementing each other. And I think, you know, we've got those pieces and, and how soon that will mesh is time will tell and, and competition will allow us to, to figure that out. But um, we've, we've got a great mix of, um, you know, complete players. Reagan, we'll go ahead and build on that. Um, how did the summer and preseason help you guys gel together? And then we heard about, uh, we heard that Coach Gensler's a Swifty. So can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Of course. I mean, you know, we were all very surprised when Coach was like, oh, you know, the new Taylor Swift movie is coming out. Took us all to the movies for a nice little team bonding experience. But um, truly, like, we learned a lot. We do have some, Swift, some fellow Swifties on the team. I, myself, am one, of course. <laughs> of course. But um, we really learned a lot of what she does. She's unapologetic in what she does. And Coach G preaches that every day in practice. Um, don't apologize for who you are. Like we're learning how to build off of one another, how playing style, how we think, um, reads, everything, and that translates to chemistry on the court and off the court. So we really focused on our team bonding in that aspect. I mean, we've been to Clay's Park over with Annie um, over there. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we've had like dip nights and whatnot. So we've really taken that off court team bonding and it's translated very well on the court. Coach Gross, you guys had a chance to go to Puerto Rico this summer. Can you talk about those extra 10 days of practice and how that helped you guys? Well, the, the 10 days of practice were awesome. Uh, and I always say this, when you do a foreign trip, the practice days are the coaches' days. And then when you get there, you know, it belongs to the players. And I think these guys had a great time. It certainly enhanced our team bonding, for sure. Uh, it was great. We got a chance to play three games. Uh, many people in here supported the trip. Once again, thank you because uh, we wouldn't have been able to take it without you. So it was great. Um, I thought I learned a lot about the team. We're continuing to be uh, a work in progress. Ryan mentioned that about the ladies. Um, you know, as we've looked at different, you know, combinations and different things throughout the time in Puerto Rico, as well as uh, throughout the preseason. We have a really, you know, talented group. This is probably the most depth we've had since we've been here. Um, and that requires a lot of sacrifice on guys' part. There's guys that, you know, we talk about recruiting and wanting Akron guys in that locker room. And, um, you know, even when we have a recruit on campus, I'll ask these guys, Reek, or some of the older guys that host them, hey, what was the recruit like? Could he fit in? Is he an Akron guy? So for us, an Akron guy basically is someone that gives everything every day to everything they do, one. And two, do we think they have the propensity to care about others? their teammates, not just themselves. You know, how selfless are they going to be? Will they 
will they fit in? Is it just about them? And two, do they, is their personal agenda not as important as winning? Does, can, you know, do they care about winning and are they going to care about each other? Do they fit in that regard? So, you know, I think we've got a bunch of guys now uh, in our locker room. That's what makes it so fun to coach them. We've got guys that are great teammates and uh, that makes it a lot, of, a lot of fun to be around them every day, to coach them every day, to challenge them every day. And certainly the Puerto Rico trip did nothing but, you know, help, help us move forward with this particular team. Enrique, I think you had some personal interest in heading down to Puerto Rico. Can you tell everybody about that? Yeah, first off, thank you um, to the people who made Puerto Rican po uh, the Puerto Rican trip possible, for one. Um, for two, it was really good for myself to go to Puerto Rico because my grandparents are both Puerto Rican, and I kind of grew up knowing about the Puerto Rican culture, but I've never been there. So I know as a team, we got the experience to visit Old San Juan and kind of toured the island a little bit and like taste the food. and I talk coach what Boricua means <laughs> and um, in person I got to see family that I've never met um, I had a few family members who lived in Corozao out there a little outside of where we stayed so it was a good as a human I kind of found my a little bit half of myself since I'm mixed so I got to <laughs> find out the Hispanic side so it was it was amazing all right we're gonna take a few questions if we we'll, we got time for one or two does anybody have a question out there that they'd like to ask Back here, John Shaw. Hey, John, I know the green captain, green light, green, green, <laughs> Ask Coach, is this thing working? <laughs> you got to ask Coach Ford that question. He's his position coach. Every time he shoots one, I think he shrieks. Where's he at? He's back there in the back. Um, yeah, Dustin can get. But yes, if he's wide open, <laughs> we're doing that with all of our guys, John. We honestly are. It's like it gives us a little bit more pop offensively and, and so, but yeah, he, he does. But I've always told him, and he knows this, I've said, hey, don't forget where the bread's buttered. Keep the main thing the main thing. You've been pretty good at scoring in and around the basket, rebounding and protecting the rim now for three years. So let's don't forget about that. Keep the main thing the main thing. But, you know, we try with every guy on our team, John, honestly, to expand their game every year. And if you look at the history of our guys, what they look like, their bodies, let's say, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, their games, what they're able to do one year, two years, three years into it, you know, it's, 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 it really is amazing. It's really cool. And um, so it's neat to see and be with these guys that have now been here four or five years and see how they've evolved. But by the way, did Reek ask you to ask that question? Are you like his marketer or publicist back there? Okay. Follow up, Enrique. How many of them are you going to make? That's the real question. All of them, of course. <laughs> All of them. I like that. I like that. All right, and then I, I believe you had a question here up front. I think the positives far outweigh the challenges. You know, we had our team retreat in the good year. The question was, what are the challenges of having this many older guys? Okay. Um, so I think the, the positives far outweigh, but I will give you a challenge or two, and, and if they're honest, they'll probably admit it. But the, the positives far outweigh it. I think, um, you know, it is the oldest team I've ever coached. I think COVID has something to do with that. I also think a lot of the older guys have made a commitment to being here. It matters to them to put on the jersey and to play here and be a part of this program and, and, and be at Akron. And that's pretty, that's pretty special. So we, we had our retreat at the business school. We had it this year on campus because we had traveled to Puerto Rico um, over in the Goodyear classroom there. You know, I, I told them, I said, we're one of the oldest teams in college basketball. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to continue to challenge them every day, hold them accountable to high standards, but we're going to enjoy this. And I keep reminding the staff of that. We're going to enjoy it. You know, this is, this is fun. Competing is fun. Being with this group is fun. It is a great group to be with. So that's, that's the positive side. The, the challenging side is sometimes when you're a fourth, fifth year guy, you think, ah, we're doing that again, huh? And sometimes you devalue 
the little things that matter that impact winning and playing well. Because you just assume that, man, we've always done that. Yeah, we're fine. We're just going to do that. And you don't really value it. And I think we've learned that lesson a little bit during the preseason without getting into details here recently. And I think that's been good for us. I think that's going to be a positive. But embracing the fact, you know, for Enrique, uh, Greg, some of these guys. So we have 125 practices a year. So you can do the math. Like a guy like Greg did 125 in 2019 20. You know, COVID made it a little bit shorter than one year. But you're talking about right now, like, you know, four to 500 pra preseason practices. That doesn't even include spring, summer, or the fall training camps that he's participated in. So I think the temptation is, ah, I've heard that before, I've done that before, and not to value that. Because I always tell them, win winning requires what it requires. There's no shortcuts to this. You have to do what it requires. And so I think that's the challenge probably if you're an older guy. Um, but these guys, you know, for the most part, answer the bell every day. Uh, I was re going to shoot threes, and I said, go see Coach Ford. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I think we're more focused on getting to Cleveland this year all together like everyone is so equal minded in that and yes I have a pass but so does everyone else on this team so I don't think I look at that as much as like I've grown so much as a player now and I want to bring everyone here with me to that level and I think we can get it done this year all right let's give them a round of applause we'll keep Enrique and Reagan up here we're gonna play a quick game Sorry, coach. Just set it down. All right, in honor of Halloween, we asked players' moms to send us all some photos of them as childhood Halloween costume people. So we're going to ask you guys to try to guess who your teammates are off of what the mom sent us. So let's go with, with number one. Who is this? Um, I'd have to say that's Daisha. Yeah. That is Daisha. All right, there we go. I'm getting nervous. And here we are with number two. <laughs> oh, that's definitely KT. That has to be KT. That is Caleb Thornton. All right, we're two for two. <laughs> two for two. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd have to say that's probably O'Brown. It's not? It's not? Who is it? Anybody, do, do you know? Do you know? No, I don't know. This no is idea. Alexis Stewart. <gasps> Alexis. Okay. Where is she? Is she around? I see it. She's not here. She's not here tonight. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right. Oh, my God. Who's, who's this guy? Do you know who this guy is? <laughs> that's myself. <laughs> <laughs> that is Enrique Freeman right there. <laughs> And my sister, so. <laughs> All right. This, this is my favorite by far. Um, is that Kaya? That is Kaya. <laughs> Kaya, can you stand up and wave at everyone? Because this is the best costume. <laughs> yes. All right, who's this guy? Think about it. Think about it. Hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> That looks like the women's coach. That looks like Ryan. Is it? Yeah. Is it Ryan? This is Ryan Ginsburg, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ryan Ginsburg. <laughs> Love it. All right, here we go. A little Barney action. Any guesses? Um. Hmm. Hmm. Is it Coach Mills? This is Morgan Haney. That's Morgan? Morgan. <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> Morgan, stand up and give everyone a wave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, number eight. He's kind of got his face blocked. I was blocked. Say, that's not fair. 
He's over there shaking that's, his head because he knows that's exactly who it is. That you see? That's it. That's this is GC. Mr. Greg Tribble. I'm going to say, I know your, I know your dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number nine. That's me. <laughs> that is, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> and then last but not least, does anybody, can anybody guess who this is? Oh, um, is that Gross? This is John Gross, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> John Gross. We did find it fitting that both of our coaches were Dracula, and Coach Ginsler said it's just because they sucked the life out of everyone. But um, we want to thank you all for coming. It's going to be a great season. Please come out and support these teams. And as always, drive safe and go Zips. Yes. Thank you, guys.